Oh, hey, what's good? It's your boy, here's Will. And welcome to my cooking show. Now, we are going to be cooking with Home Chef. Now, today we're gonna do something simple. Um, we're gonna be doing the seared pork chop with Dijon pan sauce, as you can see. This is what we're gonna be making, you dig? And in the back, it shows you everything that you need to do. Uh, shout out to Home Chef. Um, they are not sponsoring me. They didn't ask me to do this. I'm not getting paid for this. I just happened to do it. So this is all on a whim. So you just have to bear with me. Now, um, everything comes in this beautiful bag here. Well, it comes in a box. If you watched the video from yesterday, you'll see how it comes in the box with the ice packs and all that stuff. But then inside that they have individual bags and it has all of the ingredients as you will see now. <clears throat> so, you can see all the ingredients here. There it goes. So, so what we have here is you get your pork chop and I don't really eat pork like that too much but every once in a while I may have something you know just something different I usually try to eat mainly fish and um, chicken but I even cut down on chicken too a lot um, all right and then you have your string beans okay they also give you the seasoning this is the steak seasoning. Flip it up so you can see that. Hold on. There it goes. Steak seasoning. They give you the Dijon mustard. It's already. Oh, let me make sure y'all can see that. There you go. It's already portioned out for you. And they give you the uh, Meyer Poik's broth concentrate. So I guess this is some of the sauce and stuff here. And this is the, um, oh yeah, let me make sure y'all saw that. The concentrate, see, there you go. And we have the delicious Asian flavor. This is the, uh, what, what is it called? Something. Oh, it's just a base for the sauce where I put in the where to put in this. So I'm gonna go in here and get my pan. Uh, I get the medium medium side. As you see, I've been cooking even my oldest, he be he be trying to throw steaks and stuff sometimes, be tearing up the pot. But Hey, our pots is cooked in. We don't, we don't do all that fake. Try to have it look all nice and stuff for you. No, we cooking our pots. You dig? All right. So let's see if we can get started here. First thing it says to do. Hey y'all. All right, so first thing it says to do is prepare the ingredients. Got it? So we're gonna pack the pork chops, dry, uh, and season both sides with steak seasoning. Uh, one fourth tablespoon of salt and a pinch of pepper. I'm cool with the salt, you know, trying to keep down on that. Um, so. Let's take this and clean this for a second. So, give me a second here. Handy dandy scissors. <laughs> okay, so they say, you know, pat down the, but I mean, do y'all really be doing all that when you be cooking meat or you just rinse it out, slap it down, throw the seasons on? Some of the water can help the seasoning stick on it, I believe. Do you really want to pat all that down? Because I don't. I know. We've been the rules a little bit, but it's all good. 
Um, so we're just gonna go with it. See, I have it here, as y'all can see. It's going. So I guess I know. I guess with pork and stuff, I guess you do want to kind of pat it down. So let me do that. Again, I don't want to steer y'all wrong. And we're trying to follow along here. So now I've got that going. Okay. So it says next. We're going to use this uh, seasonings. So we're going to season both sides up. And when the when you get the uh, when you order these, it's usually for, I have the two servings. So you don't have to eat them all in one setting. But if you're meal prepping, this is good. You can cook these. I get them every Tuesday. Um, so when you get them, you can actually prep for your week. So you have meals set out because they give you a serving. So you know sometimes you can do that. And how you guys want to do that, but. Let's go ahead and let's get this seasoning cracking here. So let's take a look. All right, so. Okay. So here is the seasoning. So we're going to, and now I really watch my salt content because, you know, that's just the way you gotta do. So I just sprinkle a little like this. This is just the first first side. You know, don't be afraid to get get your fingers dirty. It's all right, but you got to get in there and pulverize it a little bit. Flipping. Then we're gonna do the that again. Get them in there, good. Okay. So next, let's see what it says. So we did that. Now it says cook the green beans. So place in a large nonstick pan over medium high heat and add two tablespoons of olive oil. So let's see what we got in the cabinet. Ah, what do you know? Extra virgin, robust olive oil. So let's go ahead and start this. Now it says just a two tablespoons. I usually just do the caps. You know, so that's kind of pretty. It's like two caps. It's, it's close. But I'd say that gives you a good base. Okay. And we were probably going to Do I have one I can use here? What do you use? I actually do. So, you see what they're using in the picture. And I have one. So, okay, so what it says is now, I added the olive oil, now add the green beans in the hot pan and cook one minute. And then you add one fourth cup of water one fourth teaspoon of salt, which I'm not going to do. Pinch of pepper, cover and let cook tender five to seven minutes. So, let's get some, let's get a one fourth cup of water. Well, you said usually use the regular smaller cup, but you know, we have these little, I'll use this one, it's fine. Use a little plastic. Not that much, it's only one fourth. Okay. So, what we're gonna do, 
This is on medium, okay. Basically, we're doing this. Slap that bad boy in there. Don't worry, y'all. I ain't afraid of the little top. We all grew up. Bacon and stuff, so it's all good. Plus, we got this thing too, so if I need it, it's going down. And then you just turn it, turn it down a bit, so. And you want that honey, if you hear that? Oh, it's popping, it's popping like a drop, and I tell you that. We're just cooking this for. Minute open, say it open, and then we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about five to seven minutes. So let me find my this is the right one. Nope, that one's too. You can never find the top to the pot. I don't. I like to use the ones that match. That's too small. Jeez. Okay, there we go. We're using that one anyway. Hey, this is real. We cook. I tell you, we be in here doing it. So. Now, that's been about a minute, and we're going to add in the water. Okay, to reduce the heat. That looks like it's cooking too, but I want to make sure that they are getting. That is not even a top that fits over there, but it is what it is. <laughs> so let's hit the timer. And that was, let's do seven minutes. Let's do the seven. There we go. All right, so now, while that's doing that, next thing it says to do is Place in a medium nonstick pan over medium heat and add two tablespoons of olive oil. What do they like cooking olive oil a lot with this? And add the pork chops. Cook until golden brown and chops reach a minimum internal temperature of 145 degrees. So we know just by cooking, I don't have nothing to stick in there. So it's all good. I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the fancy square. I'm gonna rinse this out real quick. All right, y'all still with me? Okay, so we're gonna prepare this in another pot on the side, okay? Okay, so we're gonna do that, medium heat again. A little olive oil in there. Do this, okay. One, two, that should be good. Stuff that I've used. 
It's nice and neat. I don't know about y'all, but I can't cook in a dirty kitchen. I have to clean up before I get down. You dig? So. Sorry, I'm a little anal about that. I like to keep that stuff, that stuff clean. See how everything the trash is back in the nice bag. See? All right. All right, so let's see. That's cooking, and then it says, what's it say, ladies and gentlemen? Throw them on there. Let's get to cracking. Throw that on here. Hand fire, that thing. out here so we can put that. Okay, so let me just read the instructions and make sure I'm doing it right. Why? So that'll be just a little bit of water for the sauce. And usually when I'm cooking stuff like meat and stuff, I like to you know cook it on one side a little bit, then I'll flip it to the other side, let that cook so both of it can kind of cook. And then I'll go back and forth on each side to make sure that it's cooked thoroughly. That's just what I do. And then the last thing is that you're going to make the sauce after you get done with this. So let's take a look and see how everything is going here. Got the, got the cook in. Mm -hmm. Smells delightfully delicious. And of course, it's like that cooks pretty fast. You know, it's like when you hear these front burners cook a lot faster. Then you got that over there. Look at that sizzle. Mm mm. Look at them vested the bowels. That's two meals worth right there. So, that'll be cool. Okay. And then. So we look at the timer here. We got one minute and 27 seconds before those are done. But of course we want to make sure they're done. We don't want them to be too hard. Hard still, so. All right, so let me flip. We flip these, because now, you know, pork, as you know, when you cook it, it gets dry real fast. So. You put the pork chops, they can easily get dry. We also want to make sure they're cooked thoroughly. But that's where the sauce comes in, which is going to be the coating that we're going to make next. So this just takes some time. So in the video, I'll probably speed this process up so you can see it a little bit. I'm not going to make you sit through the whole thing. But you can see them nice seasonings on there. And me, what I like to do when I'm cooking meat like that, I don't eat steak and beef anymore. And I rarely, like I say, I rarely eat pork. But um, what I like to do is just take my knife and just have a little slit in the center. You know, maybe in thick parts. And the reason why I do that is because I want to make sure it's cooked all the way through. Again, that's just me. I like to do it. Some of the thicker parts, that's, hey, like I said, that's just me, what I like to do. So that way, you know they're getting cooked thoroughly. Off. You make a couple of more slits. These are almost done, by the way. Cooking really nice. You can see them a nice, with that golden color. Because I don't want to overcook them too much. 
but I do want to cook them thoroughly. And you still see the little juices coming out. You still see a little redness in there. Not, it's not done. That's why you got to keep it in there. And make sure your stuff is cooked thoroughly. Right, let's check. Let's rinse this off. All right. What we have is nice and clean, so we don't cross contaminate. Nice and clean. And we're going to come over here. See how these are doing. They look delightfully delicious here. And if not too uh, it doesn't look like they're too it looks so greasy. Let's let's taste one. Whoa. Oh. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Those are tender. I do declare, Mr. Bolagawa. Right. Mmm. But as you know, I'm definitely going to put these uh, string beans on a plate, wrapping some napkins so we can. Get some of that olive oil off. It's too much grease for me. So let's head back over here to the check. And you see, still a little rich. Now the other side is probably cooked good. This probably needs a couple minutes now. When I have this flat, see how they closed up. They looking good. It's looking good. You see those slats I cut? You know what I'm so I say about a good, about a good three more minutes, and those will probably be good. And then we'll be done with that. And then we'll move on to the final pieces, which is making the sauce. Now, while the sauce is done doing that, I'm going to get a plate and create, or not create, but just kind of put these things in, uh, the string means in so I can, you know, pat them down and stuff. Don't be too much, too much grease. Uh, huh? Bowl, let me rinse it out. Got all kind of different bowls. My wife has a bowl fetish. So we go to the store, she be snatching them bowls and she likes the uh, cup fetish too. Like, you know, those water jars and sport cups with water and stuff. And sports bottles and stuff and cups, different cups. So, yeah. Alright, so let me see here. It looks like these are about done. Yeah, they look about done. We're going to turn that off move it. And... Let's see. Let's do this. What I'm going to do here. Look at that. It's crazy. 
waste olive oil. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna use this same pot. It already has olive oil in it. So, turn that back to medium, and then it's like two tablespoons of water, so very little water, basically. Sorry about that, we're back. And so we're gonna add the Mirapoi broth. So we're gonna make the sauce. So I'm gonna use this same pot. It's already got stuff in there. Olive oil, so I don't need none of that. So we're gonna add these ingredients, mustard and everything, and the water. So let's go ahead and do that. This sauce don't look like that. See that part. Look at that. That don't look. A few moments later. Yeah, we might just go ahead and 86 that so um that over there for a moment. I ain't really feeling that anyway. So hey, well I'll say hey minus the sauce. Looks like here's the finished dish. There we go. Um I'd say it's here's what it looks like on a picture. here with the sauce but we 86 the sauce and I'd say that's pretty <laughs> close as it's gonna get right all right well it has been real I hope y'all enjoyed this episode um, the first episode there'll be more to come and uh, we'll be cooking some different things so about to go get my grub on and then clean up and uh, so like I always say, y'all, peace and more hair grease. You dig? Ooh-wee. And I'm out like a sprout, no doubt.